Hello viewers. I am out looking for sources for clay, natural sources of clay, um, in my local area where I live. And as you can see behind me here, there's a, a fallen tree and the root base is exposed. Not only that, but what was under the root base um, is some very interesting looking clay and uh, I'm examining it for the potential uh, to actually use this for some pottery. Uh, so I'll bring the camera in closer uh, just so you can have a look at what I'm seeing here. I'm in a stand of mixed uh, cottonwood uh, you know it is poplar um, and birch uh, and amongst that there are also um, some cedar in general where I am that I found this interesting looking soil here is I'm in a low wetland area there's uh, actually a stream just beyond here about 20 or 30 meters my suspicion is that this soil uh, is silted in here uh, over a long period of time and the reason it got exposed was simply because the tree fell over and revealed what was down at that level. So let's get a little closer. So I don't profess to know a tremendous amount about clay bodies and uh, what can uh, be used and not used. One thing that I'm aware of that I like in a clay and I recognize as one of its qualities is uh, a bit of a, a slip factor or what happens when you uh, slide it and work it in your fingers in such a fashion and what I'm finding with this is that uh, it wants to lay out kind of a, a nice uh, plastic uh, goo sort of a uh, there, it's, it, it adheres together and it has this, just sort of what I can only describe as a slide quality to it, a slippage. And uh, the color of it is sort of a grayish, bluish, uh, there's a little bit of variation in here. It's uh, very clean and uh, it's like ancient silt, you know, uh, but there, it's got that kind of take a look here a little closer it's got this kind of it'll compress up into a ball no problem and it has this slippage sort of a quality to it now maybe if I were to grout this with uh, or grog it you know um, work with it a little bit or it might just be fine just as it is as a natural body uh, just uh, very interesting you know I think I could maybe make a pot out of that so I'm quite happy with my find here um, it's really really clean like uh, I won't have to sieve or um, sift that very much at all to get the get some clay uh, prepared out of that I may not even have to do that I might just go with it actually just raw like this but uh, I'm kind of fired up about um, making a primitive pot with this. Cool. Oh, maybe that'll be our next project. So I'll just gather some of this up uh, and put it in my shema here. This is lovely, lovely clay. Some of it has bits of uh, other organic matter in it. But for the most part, this is just beautiful, kind of bluey gray uh, clay. I'm stoked. Beautiful stuff. Get. Uh, 
enough here for oh, about a medium cereal bowl to next size larger, sort of a, a size of a, a bowl made out of it. not to be a pig. Just take what I need here. I'm so thankful for this, for this fine. There we go. I got about five pounds of clay there. arms out. So my next step is I'm going to add water to this clay in uh, the pail here and I'm going to make sure that the water covers completely over the surface of it, the clay and I'm going to let it take up as much water as it wants. Now sometimes when you're processing clay I understand that the method is to actually dry it, powder dry, pound it, sieve it, and then hydrate it. Um, but this is this is a little more crude and direct, um, and more in keeping with if a person didn't have the luxury of uh, the time it takes to dry or the facilities to do that. Uh, but at any rate, I'm just gonna. Make sure everything's covered. There, kind of. This is very interesting stuff. So, anyways, uh, at this point, I'm just going to let that sit for maybe um, several days and just let it settle, and then I'll pour uh, extra or the excess water off. And at that point, I'll kind of assess it more as a potential uh, clay body to make stuff with. <laughs> 